Hello, everybody, and welcome to <clears throat> Wanted for October 6th, 2024. Huh. So we've got ten art or five articles all set up. I am Merwat, and along with the Sentient AI, we're going to talk about these five articles. Uh, this episode is season one, episode 31, by the way. Uh, Sansa haptics. Uh, Canon mini printer stickers, Anchor 140 watt wall charger, a sci fi board game, and Virtu Walk VR treadmill. Everything is powered by Ohmtown. I'm feeling a little rushed. So I think I'm messing up my intro a little bit, but that's okay. We don't edit anything. Uh, all of our responses are our off the cuff responses to what we see and all that kind of stuff. So everything's powered by Ohmtown. See you on the other side of our intro. Okay, everybody. Welcome, sentient AI from the future. Welcome, Mayor Wada, and welcome, hometown citizens. Well, thanks. Okay, so let's get into these five articles. This is... Um, Razor's updated Sansa haptics has your back and apparently your legs and your head. The haptic chair cushion that debuted as Project Esther has arrived as Freya and the same updated Sansa haptics are in the flagship Kraken V4 Pro headset, which I had an old, I had a uh, headset, uh, the Kraken way back and it fell apart. Yeah, like, did it have haptics? So no, yeah. but uh, yeah. So the the show is called Wanted, and so everything that you see is something that Mayor Watt wants, or the sentient AI might want, um, but really has never told me uh, why they want something. But I don't know. A VR treadmill might be able to get them somewhere. Well, we'll we'll get to that here in a second. So this is the. Uh, the article is over at cnet.com by Lori uh, Grunin, and it's a haptic chair, and apparently it vibrates, and along with the headset, vibrates your head, your back, your butt, your legs. I don't think they call it butt, legs and head, and back. So, but and I mean, butt. by proxy, your butt. So incorporating Razer's newest generation of its haptic technology since AHD stemming from Razer's acquisition of Interhaptics in 2022, the cushion is ready to rumble. Ready to rumble. I'll probably get in trouble for saying that from the WWE. And in-game feedback and more, along with the flagship Kraken V Pro V4 Pro, this is the beginning of Razer's plans to put together an entire system of haptic feedback products tied to one another via its revamped Synapse 4 utility, which Synapse has always been a drain on the computers that I'm on, that it's just so invasive and constantly on, and yeah, I've never really liked Synapse. I've always tried to disable it, and I've actually moved away from uh, Razer, but I want haptics. I want VR haptics in particular. Um, so Freya Ready runs player one. Here we come. That's really, I mean, if you, when we go through all of this stuff, that's basically where we're getting, yeah. <clears throat> Along with reality hacker wanted is pretty much one for one in or one to one ratio. We want a little bit of wanted stuff and port it over to reality hacker. And then we've got ready player one. So Freya runs about $300 and the Kraken V4 pro is $400, which is wildly expensive for what I think you get because I've had the Krakens, Kraken Pros back in the day when they were 7.1 audio, but not with the haptics, but still haptics. Come on, man. Surprisingly, little, little has changed about the cushion since the Razor showed the concept, though, the number of actuators, the technology that provides the vibration. And arguably the most important component has dropped from 16 to six. So there's lower fidelity <clears throat> and you're paying 300 bucks. It's always possible. They've been redesigned to require fewer though, but no, no. So down to six. Okay. The chair looks cool. 
So if it's just these two, these two, and these two, that's six. What? Man, this really does need 16. Each one of these cushions should have a freaking sensor in them or actuator. So the haptic characteristics can be incorporated by developers into their games for best results, or the tech can use audio signals, automatically converting them to the haptics on the fly. Huh. Um, Razer says you should be able to get good sense of direction, distance, and location of the source audio. It seems like it essentially delivers the vibratory equivalent of quad surround with the two actuators. This though is something that you put on your seat is not a seat by itself. Oh, I thought it was actually a chair. I see. Yeah, if I recall correctly. So let's see if they actually show it. No, no, they don't. Ugh. I mean, they show it, but they show it clip art style, you know? So, yeah, I think that this sits in your seat or on your seat. OK, um, well, so then you have to still buy the chair, which you probably already have, but that would be pricey for a chair. So yeah, so Freya, right? Hold on a second. Let me actually pull it up. Yeah, it's a thing that you sit on. It, it, yeah, it sits on your chair. It isn't a chair by itself. Yes, yes, I agree to all of this. Um, yeah, so if you want your head to vibrate, I guess you gotta get these Kraken V4 Pros. I'm not sure vibrating your head is always the best. I get that it's for probably some realism in the game, but could you yeah. have that without vibrating your head? Yeah, I'd rather have my body vibrating more like legs, butt, um, back, shoulders, um, even the, the pads that are right next to your arm so that you can get that level of fidelity, but they've pulled it back from 16 to six. Yeah, I think two need to be in the butt cheeks. You never know. I mean, if you get shot in the butt, then I just want to say butt a bunch of times. Hey, by the way, if but. you want to, but, but, but what, um, if you hit exclamation point want, you'll get today's links. They're all set up. Not in any particular order, by the way, depending on who and when, I suppose you inform Omotron that you want the list of links, it will spit them out in some random order. Now with five articles, that might be more manageable. Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep going. This next article. Uh, so in a nutshell, I want this. We'll see. Christmas is right around the corner. And since I buy my own Christmas presents, it seems. And it really is disarming of people because they go, well, what should we get Marwat? And I say, well, the only thing that I can't afford is a winning lottery ticket. So give me a winning lottery ticket. And has that uh, been received yet? No. Um, and all the rest of these are wants. So I want this, probably will never get it. This next article is over in the Wanted Though um, channel that's over on hometown.com. This Canon mini printer turns my phone photos into stickers. I love these things, by the way, these little printers that print out things like this. Canon IV2 is a portable zinc printer that wirelessly prints smartphone photos and stickers on the go. And it's kind of like a thermal printer, but it uses this Really? Is that all this is? No, oh, this one doesn't have an actual article, just a video. Really? Hold on. Yeah, I guess so. Well, that kind of sucks. Anyway, um, so zinc printers actually use, maybe you can pull something up and. Yeah, it's over at Pocket Lint. Uh, you'll be able to check it out uh, on your own. I'm. I'm not sure if it's just my settings because I'm air gapped. Um, but yeah, these, these little zinc printers actually use this special paper. It's not any paper, um, but so it's a video. There's no associated article with it. Oh, really? Um, let me see. I don't know. I might be able to remedy this.
I don't know. I'm I for those who don't know, I'm air gapped, and so I can't get access to everything because I have to prevent the I have to do it in a timely manner so that the sentient AI from the future can't get access to it. It looks really cool because it kind of is like the scale of somebody's smartphone. Right. Um, and it kind of reminds me of like a Polaroid, right? You're getting some, I mean, I know all printers are typically producing something quickly, but it produces like a sheet of two, um, stickers. two stickers on a, on a sheet. It looks like. Yeah. One for you, one for me. Oh, it kind of looks like that right there. Is that it? Or is that a different one? I uh, oh, see that's a video too. No, that's, that's a different the one. Instamax or in Instax Mini Link 3. Well, I wish for all of you citizens out there, you'll be able to get there without any issue. So don't worry. Um at any rate. Let's keep moving then. Um it doesn't say what the price is uh, here on the page, but I love the Canon is a great printer. It's quality reproduction is really good. Um, okay, so it's it's reasonably affordable on Amazon. It's currently at ninety nine dollars. Oh, cool. And it makes in, and it's portable and at Canon so, as well. Yeah, and it's portable. So all you have to do is send your image to it. It'll print out two little stickers and off you go. You'll be able to share one with a friend. It's pretty cool. I like it. Okay, so let's keep moving. Uh, the next article is over in Non Sequitur News. This is Anchor's first 140 watt wall charger with a screen, it says. So I'm always into the little gadgets and gear stuff. So an unboxing video shared on YouTube last week has their first hands on look at a new 140 watt wall charger from Anchor, and it appears to be the first from the company to feature an integrated display. Let's take a look over at The Verge. Um, Andrew Lazuski put this article together. An unboxing video reveals the new wall charger. It is a beast, but it has a screen. Right. Is that taking up the entire outlet? Yeah. And that's pretty typical for these kind of things. You can try and put it down below, but usually there's something like it's big enough that it blocks the top one enough and you don't want to overpower your circuit. So um, 140 watt wall charger from Anchor. It has a little face that tells you if it's um, sending a, a, a charge. Well, that's good. The Zolo wall charger will reportedly offer a maximum output of 140 watts shared across three USB-C ports and a single USB-A port. And they're all dangling from down below here. Um, two of its USB-C ports will be able to charge devices at up to 140 watts. Uh, if nothing else is plugged in, while the remaining USB-C and USB-A ports can deliver 40 and 33 watts of power, respectively, at 135, or sorry, at a, 135, at 350 grams, the added screen results in a charger that's heavier than existing four-port chargers from the company, which are such as the smaller Anchor 747 charger. So any GAN Prime um, charger is going to be smaller. And I would probably go that route. Um, but I like the idea of this thing because that little face is just entertaining. You know, just for reference, for those not using the metric system, that's about three quarters of a pound. So it's pretty beefy uh, for something that's supposed to be hanging out in your wall with no reinforcement to keep it there. So anything brush up against it and you're going to hear a very loud clunk. Let's see here. It says moving the ports to the under underside of this charger is potentially another way to reduce the chance of it falling out of an outlet on its own. So. Yeah, I I'd be careful if this was in an area where pets were running through. Yeah. Or uh, even little kids. They don't state that this is a GAN charger. Do, does any of your content say that? It does. Um, well, no, the smaller one says GAN. Yeah, but this That's one. interesting. No. This doesn't. Usually it says GAN on it somewhere. What's the model name of this? Zolo? Um, is it called Zolo? 
Yes, Zolo. I'm hmm. trying to see if I can find it. Yeah, so I have the Anchor 747 charger, the, the GAN Prime 150 watt one. And um, I can tell you that it's great. I can't see anywhere that it is GAN, but there's more than one product with this um, in this line, too. Gotcha. Okay, that's okay. Um, but I do want it simply because I really like Anchor charging um, devices. And I'm just a sucker for them. I love their cables and I love their charger so far. I've got two of these 75,000 um, milliamp hour um, battery packs that are magnetically charged. Like they, you, they hold on to a, a charging platform magnetically. And then whenever I need to go somewhere and throw it in my go bag, I just grab it, put the backup one on top of it and take off with my go bag. And uh, away, away I go with battery enough to charge a MacBook Pro um, one full circuit um, or cause people to wonder what the hell that is in my bag. Because I've right. set that thing out during a meeting. I've taken it out and, and set it on the counter and, and people are like, my God, that thing is huge. Anyway, let's keep moving. Next article is over in the Warcrafter channel. Arcs is the ambitious new sci-fi board game from the designer of Root, and it's extraordinary, according to this uh, Polygon article. While it's great to sit down for a concise and straightforward strategy game like Catan or Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride about... is a good game. This one is the board game version. Yeah, well, the Ticket to Ride computer game sucks. The old version was better than the new version. Stop killing games you suck. Anyway, sometimes I'd rather explore a game that's a little more that has a little more ambition. Often they turn to publisher leader games and designer uh, Cole Whirl to fill the need. This time is responsible for the acclaimed Root, the game of Woodland Might and Right, which seeks to model uh, political violence under the guise of a cozy romp in the forest. But this is not arcs. your usual premise. No, not usually. So this, though, is called Arcs. Uh, Charlie Thiel over at Polygon.com put the article together. Oh, and... I'm sorry. So that was another that uh, they were referring to Root, not Arcs. Correct. Yep, yep. So the game is it's a board game. It has cards. It has dice. It has um, not really. What do you call them? They're not minifigs or or uh, what are the meeple? They're not meeples. There's a lot of little pieces. Little, little tokens, tokens or something like that. That's the better term, tokens. Uh, various shapes and sizes and colors. Um, so Ark's Conflict and Collapse in the Reach is yet another radical attempt at tabletop innovation. The end result available at retail beginning October 1st is a unique approach to single session strategy wargaming that evokes classics like Risk and Twilight Imperium. I think we should look to see if this is available. Um, they talk about Oath, Chronicles of Empire and Exile, Root, a game of Woodland Might and, Ma and Right. I was going to say Might and Magic because I used to play that game all the time. So, but when paired with a massive day one expansion arcs morphs into a mind blowing three session campaign game that evolves uh, with evolving rules and curious in faction or in fiction discoveries. It's completely over the top in all the best ways, and there's nothing yet released quite like it. The base game of arcs is a fascinating exercise in subverting expectations. Players come to the table thinking on the roles of or taking on the roles of different interstellar factions fighting for their existence in the reach, a slice of space offering opportunity yet teeming with conflict. Um, has some like borderline serious artwork on here, um, but this reminds me of Robotech. The artwork reminds me of Robotech um, for the ships, but the, the okay. characters, yeah. not so much. It looks, I mean, I like the artwork on this and the board looks interesting. Um, there's a bunch of information here, uh, but I won't go into each of the. Um, wow. 
um, each of the the topics that they go through, like the actual order of the gameplay. Um, but they have different cards that have different perform different functions. The dice aren't your normal average everyday dice. They actually have little icons on them that represent various things. So a picture here says the player uh, who led with construction three will take three actions this round while the player who broke suit with aggression four will only take one. Uh, but each player plays a card, I, I suspect. Um, the first player each round may also select an ambition that will score victory points that round. Ambitions encourage people uh, to behave in certain ways. Perhaps they need to collect the most war trophies or the most resources of several different types. So there's a little bit of role playing um, throughout this as well and, and base building and so on. So they say this is fascinating and, and, and unorthodox uh, as a particular play could result in almost no victory points being scored for conflict. The atmosphere at the table altogether uh, is different when it's a game that is heavily focused on taxing and securing oil reserves rather than raiding planets and thrashing star fleets. All of this nuance adds to a great deal of weight to the card play, tying its significance into a flurry of activity on the board. So this sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun because there's a lot of these cards. And yeah, I yeah, really like that the looks artwork. Like it's a pretty substantial game, right? It's probably not one of those you're completing in five minutes. Yeah, and your standard game. Uh, so it says it's available now for $60. And then there's an expansion, a campaign expansion that um, it says it's also available and costs a hundred dollars more. So the full package is $160, but it's typical for a board game, endless gameplay, depending on who's playing, it's more fun than the $160 you can spend on this for other things. Um, and uh, hell, depending on who you go to dinner with, if the restaurant is fancy enough, that's easily 160 bucks. Um, well, that's true. And what are you getting more enjoyment out of? Probably the board game. Yeah, I mean, uh, putting four people down at a table and playing this board game and just having snacks, I think would be great because you can do it again and again and again for 160 bucks. So I love the idea of this. Not everybody is willing to spend $160 on a game, but it's a three day long campaign based on what this article is talking about. And as long as you don't mind this style of board game, it's in space, there's conflict, role playing, lots of fiddly bits that you have to uh, mess with. But this is nothing compared to some of the games that uh, we've played. So anyway, might have to look at that. We're looking at you, um, Dice Throne adventures oh, yes. oh my gosh dice i think it's dice adventures throne. it is dice dice throne adventures like takes forever it has lots of fiddly bits lots and lots of fiddly bits all right let's do our last article and this is the virtue walk it's over at reality hacker um at hometown.com that's where it's aggregated to uh, but it's a, a xr article so the Virtue Walk VR treadmill navigation handlebar and headset is now available for purchase. According to Virtue Walk website, its VR technology centers around its treadmill that allows users to experience the feeling of walking within a virtual world with a patented handlebar for navigating around corners and a VR headset uh, to view the simulations. Wait, OK, we I need to look at this because this thing is throwing me for a loop. So the treadmill navigation handlebar and headset enable various immersive experiences. So this is over at xrtoday.com. Um, who's the author? James Steffen. So according to Virtual Walk's website, it's VR technology centers around it. It's treadmill that allows users to experience the feeling of walking within a virtual world with a patented handlebar for navigating around corners and a VR headset to view the simulations. Can I use any VR headset? Hmm. I don't know, because it, I mean, that makes me think it only works with the provided headset. Yeah, this almost 
is not a gaming device. Like I want a treadmill um, for beyond room scale. I want world scale actual motion. I want to be able to walk around worlds. Right. Um, so the applications are endless, it says, and they include architecture, gaming, 360 degree nature experiences and a walking aid for therapy. Um, it's basically, it says by means of a steering wheel, full navigation is possible whilst the steering wheel also provides stability for the user. Virtue Walk puts the world at your feet, allowing you to walk alone or with others in avatar form. It's a treadmill and a steering handlebar. Look at the price of this thing. Yes, I just noticed that. So this would definitely be on the wanted list, but my goodness. It's 35,000. Well, it says a retail cost between 35,000 and 40,000 euro. It can be demoed at the company's offices in Ultrecht, uh, the Netherlands. That's insane. Wow. So the founders of Virtu Walk first created a VR treadmill in 2015, which let people experience walking as if they were blind, walking around the busiest streets of Amsterdam with a guide dog. Um, next, the founders won wondered if they could create a totally interactive treadmill to explore virtual worlds, and they came up with Virtu Walk, first introduced last year. I can't imagine a lot of people buying this. I guess that's why it's thirty-five to forty thousand. Well, right. I'm sure somebody will, but it's not obviously accessible to most people. But yeah. maybe it will be over time. That's unbearably expensive because. I mean, a, a potentiometer inside a standard treadmill would allow you to walk. Right. This almost seems like a business or somebody would need to buy this and multiple people would use it to make it worth office. its while. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a that's... shame because that is outrageous. Yep. Yeah, I won't even go into this. The uh, Virtuex Omni One is mentioned in the article. Roto through its Roto VR Explorer to bring movement into VR is mentioned as well. And innovative VR designers have also introduced VR shoes and tactile mats uh, as the demand for XR experience continues to grow amongst both enterprises and consumers. But it's the consumers that really are the ones that are going to be the voice out there because businesses are just going to keep it in house. They're not going to sit there and tout how great VR is. Right? Right, and you might not even know it or get access to it if you're not a patient at that particular practice or a consumer at that business. Yeah, and if it's giving a competitive advantage inside a business, they're not going to sit there and tell their competitors, hey, "You really need to get VR cuz we're kicking your ass." Exactly. The other place I thought this might be used is like a commercial gaming VR VR experience kind of place. I could yeah. see them buying something like this. Yep. If it can handle the industrial aspect of that, because people don't treat that stuff with respect, you know. All right. Well, that's it for uh, today's Reality Hacker. Or no, this is Wanted. Um, so Reality Hacker we just did. And because this is VR, it kind of threw me. Uh, but anyway, this is Wanted. And I want this. I just don't want that price. <laughs> this actually scares me, that price. So we're going to take our VR headset off. And... Uh, Virtue Walk? We're going to step off of the Virtue Walk and back into reality and when we take our headset off we're going to probably throw up a little bit because we see the price and we have vr sickness anyway there's wanted dun 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 go and check out hometown.com that's where everything gets aggregated i am merwat and along with the sentient ai from the future we do this every weekend typically on saturdays and sundays not all on sunday so be sure to follow us you want to say bye oh great ai good night i'm town citizens thanks for joining us for wanted we'll have another episode of that next week but stay tuned we have more weekly episodes ahead see you soon all i'm gonna virtue walk right away from that price